Hello mathematicians, we see one nice problem from real analysis. So let me phrase the question. The set 1 by n sin 1 by n. Consider this set. Set of all 1 by n sin 1 by n such that n belongs to n. And we want to understand the limit points of this set. Okay, the options are this set has only one limit point and it is 0, only one limit point and it is 1, only one limit point it is minus 1. And there are three limit points minus one zero and one. Okay, let's see what what are the possible limit points of this set. Uh, so before proceed further, many of you guys are watching my videos, but you haven't subscribed. Okay, if you haven't subscribed so far, please subscribe to my video so that I know how many people are watching regularly. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Let Let's continue with the problem. So. It is about uh, 1 by n sin 1 by n. So we use all the prop we the known properties of sin x to understand this quantity 1 by n sin 1 by n. Now modulus of sin x less than or equal to 1 for all x belongs to R. Okay, this is a very well known result. So whatever real x you feed this one this cosine modulus of sin going to be less than 1. That implies that the sequence sin 1 by n. It is a bounded sequence. Okay, for example, it cannot. Uh, this sequence cannot uh, be larger than one. Actually, okay, or uh, it will be always lies between minus one to one. Okay, therefore, it is a sine one by n is a bounded sequence. Now, one by n is a convergent sequence. Sine one by n is a bounded sequence. So, if a sequence, so this is our result. If a sequence converges to zero and the sequence is bounded then the product sequence is converges to zero okay so since this sequence is now converges to zero the sequence one by n sine one by n converges to zero uh, zero is a limit point but limit of a sequence is unique okay therefore zero is the only limit point okay in other words suppose uh, they are saying uh, hey, anyway now we know zero is a limit point uh, suppose the uh, one is also a limit point. Okay, clearly these two op these two options are wrong. They are saying uh, one is the only limit point, minus one is the only limit point. That is not correct because we know zero is a limit point. But if we look at the last option, they are saying that if this set has three this set has the three limit points and minus one zero one. Suppose one is also a limit point to this set. Okay, whenever uh, L, whenever L is a limit point to a set E, then you can find a sequence Xn in the set E such that Xn converges to the point L. Okay, so this is a general result. For example, like if you look at uh, the set open 0, 1, then the point 1 is, a, 1 is a limit point, then you can find a sequence in open 0, 1 that converges to 1. For example, you can take 1 minus 1 by N. It is a sequence in open 0, 1 that converges to 1. Okay. So, similarly, if 1 is a limit point, then you can find a sequence here which converges to 1. But it is a convergent sequence. 1 by n sin 1 by n converges to 0. If it is converges to 0, then all the subsequence will also converges to 0. Okay. So, there cannot be a sequence, subsequence converges to 1. So, basically, like a limit of a sequence is unique. Therefore, 0 is the only limit point of this set. This set you can consider as a sequence also or the set also the property is not going to alter okay therefore this is the only uh, zero is the only limit point is the correct option but uh, here we have used a very very a very important result and uh, that proof is also very interesting that can be used in other problems so let's see why the result is true proof is just a two lines of this result if a n tend to zero and b n is a bounded sequence then the product sequence is converges to zero so why we see why this sequence converges to zero? This proof is very, very nice because, like, uh, by this proof you can understand the definition of uh, convergence uh, very easily. That is why. So we are given that B n is a bounded sequence. Bounded means the modulus of B n less than or equal to k for all n. You can find a k such that modulus of B n less than or equal to k. Now it is given that a n is converges to zero. What is the meaning of a n is converges to zero? Given epsilon greater than 0, there exists a stage n naught belongs to e natural numbers such that 
modulus of a n less than epsilon for all n greater than or equal to n naught okay usually if uh, a n converges to if a n converges to l you will have modulus of a n minus l less than epsilon but since l equal to 0 we don't have a minus l here okay so this is our definition of a sequence converges to 0 so since a n converges to 0 we have this so this equation 1 is true now now we look at uh, we want to prove modulus of a and b n converges to sorry we want to prove a and b n converges to zero so what we need to prove we want to prove that given epsilon greater than zero you can find as uh, natural number n naught such that modulus of a and b n less than epsilon for all n greater than or equal to n naught okay here uh, this n naught uh, should be capital n because here i have used capital n naught so this also capital n naught okay so in so since a n greater than 0 we got this to prove a and b n converges to 0 you take an arbitrary greater than 0 you have to show a stage such that a modulus of a and b n less than epsilon after that stage that's what we want to prove so we calculate modulus of a and b n modulus of a and b n equal to modulus of a n into modulus of b n using the property of modulus so this is less than or equal to k times mod a n why because since b n is a bounded sequence we have uh, this is less than or equal to k times mod a n so let it take epsilon greater than 0 be given okay so to prove a and b n converges to 0 we want to prove that there exist n naught belongs to n such that modulus of a and b n less than epsilon for all n greater than or equal to n naught this is what we want to prove okay but what we have we have this is true okay so you since a n converges to 0 this is true using equation 1 we want to prove there exists a stage n naught okay okay so let epsilon greater than 0 be given now you consider epsilon by k okay k is a positive integer therefore epsilon by k is also a positive number so this statement is true for any epsilon greater than 0 in particular this statement is true for epsilon by k also okay so we apply this statement for epsilon by k instead of epsilon what will you get there exists n naught belongs to n such that modulus of a n less than epsilon by k for all n greater than or equal to n naught okay okay this implies there exists n naught belongs to n such that uh, you see here let's apply uh, modulus of a n b n less than or equal to k times a n now a n less than epsilon by k after this stage correct so we 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 combine these two statements okay mod a n b n less than or equal to k times mod a n always a n less mod a n less than epsilon by k after this stage so when you uh, when you combine these two statement the resulting statement the true after this stage okay so there exists n naught belongs to n such that modulus of a n b n mod a n b n less than this quantity for mod a n you can replace this value so you get uh, mod a n b n less than or equal to k times epsilon by k for all n greater than or equal to n naught okay therefore you can find a n naught belongs to n such that mod a n b n less than k times epsilon by k for all n greater than or equal to n naught this implies mod a n b n less than epsilon for all n greater than or equal to n naught okay therefore this means that the sequence a n b n is converges to zero okay so the tricky idea is to i mean uh, uh, consider epsilon by k in place of epsilon then the result follows okay so it is a very simple proof uh, a and b and converges to zero so we have seen that also so using that result uh, uh, as we discussed earlier the results follows okay okay guys i hope you understand clearly so if you like this video please like like the video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already okay Okay guys, take care. I'll meet you in different problem. Thank you.